Hello and welcome to the Microsoft Megabyte and oh, oh my goodness. Look at all the mess everywhere. I mean, look at that. Flagged emails, random thoughts in your notes app, scrap paper with your to-dos manically scribbled on them. It's it's absolute madness. I mean, you'd think that maybe, you know, just maybe the company who developed products like Excel, Word, and Outlook might have a few other tricks up its sleeve to help you stay organized, wouldn't you? You'd think that, wouldn't you? Hmm? Well, yeah, there are several downright magical apps to help you do just that. So for this episode, let's chat about just four of them and how they affect the real lives of some of my colleagues. Enjoy. Well, it's only Alex Humble here on the Megabyte Podcast. You're back, Alex. Despite my various warnings, you've returned. Thank you. Now, listen, are you listening? Yeah, on this day, I thought I was supposed to listen. <laughs> We're talking about organizational apps. We on, on our training team, we all use different apps. And I know you're quite fond of perhaps the most visual of all these organizational apps. Tell us about how you stay organized. As, as probably the least creative and least artistic member on the team, I think I do use Whiteboard uh, the most. And that's right, I gave it away. It is Whiteboard. For me, I have quite a process of staying organized. For me, Whiteboard is that app that I pull up on my PC uh, usually on my surface, since I can use the slim pen, uh, pull that up, jot the idea down really quick, take a diagram. It's kind of like my really quick scratch pad where, I mean, just yesterday I was working on my car and I needed to mark where these spark plugs were supposed to go back in. Eight Ooh, cylinders, okay. eight spark plugs. Mm-hmm. So I marked them all down because I wanted to make sure I was you know, troubleshooting correctly. That's not going to go into OneNote. That's not going to go into to do. Whiteboard is perfect for that. And then if I need to take that and save it and you know, keep that long term, yeah, then it's going to go into one of those other apps. But for, for diagramming, for like quick brainstorming and planning, it's really hard to beat whiteboard. Um, I can just see like all kinds of different projects and some yeah. really strange drawings that I've got going on here within within whiteboard. My attempts to be artistic. That's so kind you, of how so I use you it. You kind of use it as a catch all for to make sure just something gets captured. You having some idea or, or you're going through a project and this might not be long term. It might not be something you need to save forever in an Excel spreadsheet or what have you. It's something that you need to just capture right now, whether it's a, a seating chart for how you're going to lay out the, the, the seating for, you know, a party you're hosting or where the spark plugs are on this so that when you go back 15 minutes later, you actually know the wiring and set up. That makes a lot of sense. How would you say that whiteboard so it's a whiteboard app. It's free. It's available in the Microsoft Store. How would it differ from like the Sticky Notes app or just like using Microsoft Word? Like I think probably most people would use Microsoft Word for capturing quick notes. How is this different? Yeah, and I, I, I do use both of those. Uh, but for me, the benefit is if I am going to do a seating plan or a seating chart for a garden or draw out a diagram, it's going to be a real pain to do that within Sticky Notes or Word with whiteboard, I can very quickly draw something out using the pen, my finger, the mouse. Uh, and then if I want to, mm-hmm. I can type along next to that because my handwriting is just, oh, it's absolutely terrible. So it's that mixture of, of typing, handwriting, and, and diagramming. It's really tough to do that anywhere else as quickly as you can within whiteboard. Okay. Uh, I don't mean to alarm you, but if you glance out the window, you're, the car that you're repairing is actually rolling out into the street. So uh, Alex, looks like you got to go. Got some urgent business. Everyone out there. Take a tip from Alex. Try whiteboard, won't you? Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Brian. Adrian, I finally conned you into joining the podcast. Thanks so much for helping us out. We've been coworkers now for a long time, and we work on a ton of projects together. And you are basically tasked with keeping an entire team organized. So when I thought about who to invite to talk about their favorite organizational tools for Microsoft. Obviously, your name was top of the list, but I'm curious what you use in your personal life from these apps and services, because I think that's what's going to be most relevant to, to everyone. You know what? It sounds crazy, but this app is the basis for everything for me. Mm-hmm. Um, as a project manager uh, with y'all, as well as a project manager of my own household, right. uh, managing my children, <laughs> mm-hmm. is uh, yeah. there's so many moments that I'm just hanging out, doing something with the family or, or out and about, and the wife gives me a call. It's like, hey, I'm going to need you to take care yeah. of get this or or don't forget that uh your oldest son is getting off the bus at this time yes so instead of just putting those things down in a simple note 
to do has been able to help organize my life tremendously. Yep. I set like a specific times that I need to be somewhere that it's going to alert me. Um, I can even uh, link in and share a to-do list with my wife at the same time. So she tells me, hey, we really need these ingredients for this meal tonight. Uh, instead of me just having a note, I can actually have a to-do list and check off each item. So when I get home, I have a story to tell if something is missing. <laughs> no joke. So I am with you on all these examples. Uh, I use the same app. So we're just talking about Microsoft to do. And this is, again, a free app you can get in the Microsoft store. You can get it on your phone, Android phone, iPhone, your iPad, whatever the case is. This app is phenomenal just microsoft to do sharing the list like you say is so big of a deal we have one my wife and i share a list that's just about movies we want to watch with the kids because you know like you'll like have those thoughts as you're walking to the grocery store it's like hey we we have never seen up we never watched up with the kids and but that's a thought that just goes away so you know when that happens i pull it out like open up the movie to watch list and to do add it boom it's been captured yeah, Brian, have you ever tried out the integration with Outlook or any other mail client where? It okay, talk to me about that. Like, I know I see that it's possible, but how does that work for you? Oh, it, it's phenomenal. So once it's linked to my email, anything that comes into my email that has any type of timestamp on it, it will immediately put it into the My Day tab, yeah. uh, which is it's incredible. I don't know what type of AI is being used, but yeah. being able to click on my day as soon as I open my service duo in the morning and to see uh, appointments and things that have came through to my email, as well as stuff that I've put in for previous days, you can really organize it day by day and just attack what needs to be done immediately. Yeah. How about those suggestions? You open up the to do app, you hit my day and it says, here's some suggestions and by that, it means things that you said you wanted to do a couple of days ago that you, um, well, never got around to, did you? <laughs> Which is awesome because it's like, those are the, yep, those are the things I forgot to do. I forgot to pick up my kid from baseball camp and now he's been sitting there for two days on the street. Thanks, Microsoft to do. No, just kidding. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it, it has really helped me organize my life tremendously from work and from home. I, I really hope everyone out there who has a family is listening because this is an app that can transform how your family communicates. And I don't know about you, Adrian, has this saved a lot of like Facebook messages, text messages, like a bunch of back and forth between you and your wife that just you're just like, yeah, yeah, it's just details, details, details. Whereas now you just go and you add it to the list and you know you both can see it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And especially having notifications on. So once my wife adds something to our yes. shared list, it will immediately notify me. So instead of having to wait for a text and things like yep. that, I know immediately. Yeah. Adrian, man. He knows immediately. That's the takeaway. He's staying organized with Microsoft to do. And you know what? You should too. Thanks so much, Adrian. Mm. And now we have Kyle. Kyle, do you ever stay organized? And if so, how? Well, I believe you're having other guests talking about some of my favorites. But what if these notes are just for you? What if they're just... You know, your school notes for a classroom, you don't need to share them with anybody. It's just how you take notes and couple that with what if you learn predominantly through handwriting? Mm -hmm. Studies have shown I don't have them with me. I'll just pull a statistic out of thin air. Eighty five percent of people learn better and can memorize that. We're going to check that. Yeah, (laughs) check it out later Uh, when they handwrite notes. When your notes are handwritten versus typed versus just reading something, if you can write it back, you remember it better. That is the mentality behind the br- the newest of these productivity solutions Microsoft has put out. It's free in the store. It's Microsoft Journal. Well, okay, so free in the store, meaning the Microsoft Store where you get all your apps and stuff. It's free. It's a free app, and it's called Microsoft Journal. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Talk to me about this. It what is, is Microsoft people, Journal? It's for people who think in ink. Uh, It is 100% touch and handwriting focused. Mm -hmm. Like the first time you open it up, even if you're on a traditional desktop, the instructions are like tap here, draw around this. It gives you a lot of instructions on how to use the different sort of intuitive tools and gestures inside. But it is 100% focused on inking and touch. It's like building a a handwritten composition notebook. If you want to think about OneNote as like a big three ring binder with tabs and folders and different organizational elements, a journal is just like that 
traditional composition college ruled notebook yeah but it does stuff no traditional pen and paper notebook could do like if i put a star next to something it flags that as an important item and then i can open Uh this panel on the left hand side and just search by things that i put a star next to if i start bullet pointing things it recognizes i've made a list and then if i need to reference that list later you can search by oh where are my lists at oh they're on page five and 23 and 107 Wow. Okay. As you're talking, I'm thinking about some people I know from uh, from older generations that are, are used to doing that kind of notation in a physical binder and flipping through, looking for all the stars, looking for all the arrows that indicate tasks and things to do. And you're saying this is the same thing, but digitally, and it'll automatically highlight those as the action items that are associated with those icons. Yep. An, an underline action turns things into headings for different pages. So you can search by your headings for all these different pages. It, it truly is like the evolution of all the handwriting stuff that's been done in OneNote. So totally built for people using, you know, a Surface Slim Pen 2 and a Surface Pro 8, something that's really meant for slim handwriting on the go. Whenever you need to take some notes, bust out journal. Okay, you're talking about other people now. But what we want to know, what we want to hear about is how you use Microsoft Journal. How has it affected your life? What do you use this app for? All right, this is the this is the real dope and skinny, and your your listeners are going to get insight into me that they'll never have seen coming. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm running a small Dungeons & Dragons campaign. Say it and isn't so. Yeah. In the moment, there's a lot of moving pieces when you, when you run a campaign, even out of a book, which is what I do because I'm not creative. But the the main notes happen in one note but in the moment when i'm in the mm. actual thing and i'm just with a i don't want a pad and paper because that creates a mess so when i'm tracking you know the fights the turn order and fights and and health and, oh, and, and yeah. all the different stuff that needs to be managed in the moment journal is perfect for that oh great and then it gives you a record of of the campaign of of the activity that you've been what is it called it's, a, it's not called what is it uh, yeah, campaign is correct it's a campaign as i did great. okay okay yeah is, and unlike yeah sticky notes which are small and and they still have some touch elements um but you have to you have to manage the size of them and it's very easy to delete a sticky note like a journal can be one consistent thing and you just keep adding pages and the journal app allows you to create multiple journals so inside the app there's a book for the campaign and i could create a new book should i you know take up some adult education and want to learn about evolutionary biology i'd have notes for that like you can have multiple journal journals in microsoft journal it's free in the microsoft store check it out just one of the many organizational tools we're talking about today uh kyle enjoy your raid enjoy uh the caves and i hope you get some amazing treasure um and that the town no 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 prior is a fan of your i'm i'm running the game my goal is to kill my friends oh i see that's that's the that's the message that's the takeaway yep (laughs) goodbye on pen and paper digital pen and paper And it's Tony Hannity's. Hi, Tony. Hello, Brian. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, but I'd be doing better if you would reveal to me one of your favorite organizational tools from Microsoft. Honestly, one, one of the, the apps that I, I use uh, on a daily, at least twice a day, is going to be OneNote. And it's for a multitude of reasons, but especially right now, because I don't know if you know this, but I'm planning to get married next what? year. What? That's incredible yeah. news. I yeah. didn't know. I didn't know you've got anyone to agree. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> listen, there, let's there, not get there, into there, it. We don't have to dig deep into. No, but truly, that is that is. Uh, of course, I already knew that. But yes, it's wonderful news, and I think it's a perfect use case scenario for what you're talking about because OneNote is a free app. It's available on you know iOS, on Android, on Android. Windows 10 PCs, mm-hmm. on Mac OS devices, on the web, but it can do so much. They can do so much. It can all honestly be a little bit intimidating. And what are you using it for then? Let's let's make it real with a real use case scenario from your life. So every single like main topic of setting up, you know, uh, uh, setting up a wedding and and like organizing organizing uh, the venues, uh, the groomsmen, the bridesmaids, every single uh, one of those topics has its own page within a one note notebook and that whole notebook is shared between myself and my fiance so at any beck and call we can update the uh, notebook accordingly so when she makes her own dress for the flower girls wow talented she can you know take a picture of it and put it into the flower girl 
uh, folder. Page, and yeah. Conversely, when I figure out, well, this is the way that I want the cake to be designed, we can have that collaborative experience uh, kind of throughout the whole day. Instead of having it in a separate chat with some other like chat yeah, program. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, Tony, how would this, how do you think this would play out without OneNote? Because I totally understand the vision you're talking about. In fact, when I think of a wedding planner, I'm thinking of the stereotypical uh, upper class fa fashionista type person with their, with their their leather notebook that they're paging through and organizing. And it's a three ring binder, basically. Yeah. You, you've digitized that process and pretty much shared. What do you think this would be like? What tools would you be using if you didn't have OneNote? Uh, definitely a Franklin Covey, a uh, little uh, attache kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of text messages back and forth. Let's well, be I was going to say a lot of text messages, phone calls, like physical sticky notes. That would that would be the big thing, like physical sticky notes around her desk, around my desk of, hey, I have this great idea, whether we do it or not. It's still an, an idea and I still have to get it written down. Slip and slide. All right. That's an idea. Uh, right. <laughs> or air conditioning inside by where we're going to be sitting because it's going to be in Louisiana. So we need air conditioning. Like where, right. how would we place those? Phone and numbers do, for vendors and, and sure, contact or, information, everything. Yeah, that's wonderful. Or just like, you know, the, the big one that everyone uh, doesn't really put a lot of emphasis on until kind of late is the playlist. Oh, what should be on the playlist? And we have to figure that out right now. So obviously things like, you know, a little bit of line dancing here, maybe a little bit of uh, Creedence Clearwater, maybe a little bit of more or less traditional, depending on, you know, what, what your mood is for. And then you you just literally just, you know, make that playlist a shareable page or just uh, copy and paste that page to your DJ or whomever is going to oh, be in yeah. charge of the music. All right. You know? I, I, I just, I, as you're going through this, I, I assume one of the pages is the uh, RSVP list, and I look forward to um, you know. Brian, seeing, I can't uh, seeing, hear you. I, oh, I'm, no. I'm I'm having I'm having why, why does reception always, area is, issues. Come, I'm going through up. a tunnel. How come it always breaks up whenever I try to get invited to a party. Sound engineer? What you're gone too? Tony Hannity, starting out a new chapter of life the right way using Microsoft OneNote. Thanks so much, Tony. Of course. This has been the Microsoft Megabyte Podcast, a training tool for Microsoft field team members and sales professionals across the country, produced by Microsoft employees.